like baking a cake, man. You gotta put all the ingredients in. So all the different things have to happen. You gotta shape it up. It, you gotta add different things to it, right? In order for it to be put in that oven and come out of a cake, man, a finished product. So just like these, these uh, proxy words, a little bit has to be added here and there. Certain things have to take place. Then in the end, everything will accumulate and then you'll have World War III. Then you have these missiles gonna be shot. And then the, the return of the Lord, you how it's shot, man. Okay? Uh, this is uh, uh, Ezekiel. I think it's Ezekiel. to 38 Ezekiel 38 uh, in one and the word of the Lord Yahweh came into me saying son of man set thy face against God and the land of Magog the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesied against him Gog and Magog the ancient land is where you see Russia and the land mass around Turkey Okay, all right, and it says, and, and say, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I am against thee, O God, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws and will bring thee forth and all thine armies, horse and horsemen, and them clothed with all sorts of armor, even the great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords, so he's telling you that he's getting ready to bring you into a situation where you're gonna be at war again, right? He's finna put a hook in your jaw, meaning the Lord is finna guide you wherever he wants you to go in the position that he wants you to be in to, to do his work. He's getting ready to turn, uh, 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 the Lord is getting ready to make Russia like the old Soviet Union. See, it's like the Soviet Union now ain't like the Soviet Union of old. They were more treacherous the old Soviet Union. So he's gonna make them uh, uh, be of the same mindset that they were in, in the old days. The USSR, those days. So it's, it's about to happen, man. Uh, verse five says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmets. Persia, if you look up Persia, if you type in ancient Persia, it's gonna, it's gonna uh, go to uh, Iran, which is modern day Iran. Okay, so they're going to be a part of this uh, new world war. But you see, they haven't basically uh, uh, went in there yet. They're they're uh, they have the trade wars in the talks, but ultimately it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, Gomer and all his bands in the house of Togomar, the North Quarter, all and all his bands and many people. So. You have you have the uh, uh, Europe. They're going to be into it. France, as, as you see right now, you got UK. They separated from the uh, EU, right? France, France is uh, having a uh, 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 spats with different people. Okay. So man, this World War Three thing is serious, man. And it's going to lead to thermonuclear destruction. Okay. Many deaths are going to happen. This is uh, Isaiah 66. 66 and 15. It says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebukes with flames of fire. So it's saying the Lord is going to come with fire, man. How, what fire is that talk about? talking about the fire of what thermonuclear destruction this is that fire that he's going to come with okay to render his anger with rebukes okay he's going to rebuke you with flames okay you nations man you edomites and two-thirds of our own people man of the negroes latinos and the native americans man so hey you, you, uh, you better repent man you know because no one knows who the elect the elect are so it's good to repent and come back under the law, statutes, and commandments. 
feel sorry for your transgressions and come back, man, before it's too late. Because this war is, is, is inevitable. You know? Or inevitable, however they use that word. You know? Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull that word up. In inevitable. Inevitable. Check this out. So, you repent and you come back under the laws and the statutes. Hoping that, hoping that you're doing enough, man, for in that day, the Lord will look out for you. Okay? That he may save you and, and beam you up on these chariots because this situation is going to get real bad. Man. It says this war going to be with burning and flames of fire. And you heard Isaiah 66, man. It says it's going to come with people with fire. Okay, I type that word in. I guess they don't want to bring it up. Inevitable, sure to happen. That's the definition. Capable of being incapable, incapable of being avoided or evaded. So when you read these articles saying World War III is inevitable, they're telling you it's going to happen and, and, it, and it can't be avoided. And the reason why it can't be avoided, because why? The, the Lord has said it. He has put it in his word, man. That's why it can't be avoided. Because he said it was going to happen. He said it was going to happen. And guess what? Uh, I'm going to read this scripture. He said it was going to happen. Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word go that, so shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. Right? Void means useless and empty. So my, his word not gonna return like that. It says, but it will it will shall, it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it, man. So when the Lord put the spirit on, on these men to send these thermonuclear missiles, when you read in uh second Ezra, the 16th chapter, they won't miss, man. Okay, they're not going to miss. They're going to they're going to be a, a, in the midst of, of the heavens, and they're going to hit their targets, man. And it tells you in there that none are going to miss their targets, man. Matter of fact, let me get that right quick to prove that to you. Y'all think this is a game? Let me show you this uh, second address. Second Ezra 16, 16, Second Ezra 16, and uh, I started 12 to read down, and I started 11 to read down into it. The Lord Yahweh shall shy shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beat to powder at his presence? Question. So who, who not going to be beaten at, 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 to powder when the Lord come? With these angels, man. With this uh, concentrated fire, they're gonna be shooting out of the uh, 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 out of the, the chariots, man. Concentrated fire. Let me show you. Show you a picture. The best picture I can get of that. Okay. No, oh, this is the big ship. This is that big ship, a rendition that the one your house I'll be on. You see those chariots, all those little bitty round things are chariots. And you see the, the, the people getting beamed up and you got the angels, the men, bringing havoc, man. Okay? Thermonuclear destruction. They are helping out with the destruction. Right? And they're taking Esau. And you see people getting beamed up. That blue beam, man. That's that high concentrated beam of fire, man. Right there, okay? All right. Fervent heat, man. And it says, uh, verse 12, the earth quaketh and the foundations thereof, the sea arises up with waves from the deep. 
and the waves of it are troubled, and the fishes thereof also before the Lord, Yahweh by Shijah Shai, and before the glory of his power, man. So everything gonna catch catch it, man. Okay? The beast, the fish, the people, everybody, the elements. It tells you the elements gonna melt with fervent heat. When you read in uh Second Peter, third chapter. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp. These are the missiles, right? Because they look like arrows. When you read in the scriptures, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see the word nuclear bomb in the scriptures. Okay, the Lord uses metaphors, adjectives to describe certain subjects. Now you can see nuclear, the sword, you'll see arrows, you'll see uh, the bow which represents the silo that it comes from, okay? You'll see, uh, 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 it talks about the mouth of a lion, okay, the warhead, you know? It's, and it's what it talks about, man. It says, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, uh, archer, archer, it's compared to an archer, because an archer is what bends the bow back and lets the arrow go, you know? So these, so these, 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 uh, basically when they go to war, they will be made archers by Yahweh Bashanao Shai, man. They will be made to, to pull that, to hit that button, which is to pull that bow back and let the arrow go, okay? And it says, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss. See, that's it. He said they shall not miss, okay? And it says, when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. So when these, when these, when these arrows, which are nuclear weapons, nuclear uh, missiles, get shot from one end to the earth to the other, guess what? They're not going to miss their targets. And that's, that's what the scriptures say, okay? It said they will not miss, man. These are going to be guided by a high, <coughs> a high technology uh, 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 guidance system, okay? And Russia is known as what? The bear. And you know a bear has a great defense system. So in that day, the defense system of Russia is going to be too much for these people to withstand on this side. Plus, the nations are mad when you read in Jeremiah 51. So it's going to be, they are going to basically be uh, coming against uh, uh, America at the same time, man. Okay? They're going to be coming at the same time. So it's going to be too much for them to handle, all right? Back in uh, Isaiah. Isaiah. Let's see what we got here. Isaiah 55, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with rebuke and his 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 anger with fury and his rebukes with flames of fire. Now we know them to be the arrows, which are the what thermonuclear missiles. Okay, this is how he's going to show his anger, his indignation on the on the on the uh, on the world, man. Okay, even two thirds of his own people, you're gonna you're gonna experience the anger of the Lord, man. Through famine, through pestilence, man. Through martial law, through the time of Jacob's trouble, through the concentration camps. And if you take that urchin in of the microchip, which is spoke of in Revelation 13 chapter, 16 to 18, if you take that chip, then there's a certain sort of destruction is coming to you. It's soon to the next chapter, Revelation 14, 9 and 10. Okay? So the situation's gonna be grim. So they're gonna try to get you to take the chip so you can what buy and sell. But this is what the Lord, hey, this is a test, man. Whether you're gonna whether you're gonna follow follow uh, the ways of Esau, the Antichrist, who are against the anointed, but you're gonna basically follow Satan, or you're gonna follow Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man. He gonna have a situation so grim to the point where you're gonna be like, man, I, certain people gonna be like, I gotta take it, man. 
if they're not going to trust in the Lord. You know? Hey, man, it's going to be a... Uh, Hey, it's going to be a time that never was since the nation. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. And that's a heavy scripture, man. The slain of the Lord going to be many, man. When you go into the word many, it goes into numerous, man. It could be, it could be, it could be, that number is going to be, it's going to be billions, man. Because we have seven billion people and a half billion people on the planet, man. Okay? So it's gonna be billions, man, that they get messed up in this in this uh third world war when the Lord uh, sent his son to restore this order, okay? Alright. Now Let me get a. Uh, this is the book of, of uh, this is the book of, of, of Haggai two and six. For thus said the Lord Yahweh of hosts, yet once is is it is a little while and i will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land he said yet yeah, once because he all he's always shaked up the uh uh the heavens man the, whoever was in rulership he shook up the babylonian empire he shook up the medio persian he shook the greeks up and he shook the romans up so what more is he gonna uh basically uh shake this place america up man Okay, he gonna shake it up. Uh, Hebrews, let's go to the book of Hebrews. 12, 12, 12 and 25. And the reason why he's, he's getting ready to shake this place up, when you read in there, is he's getting ready to prepare this earth for the glorious reign of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, man. That glorious reign of Yahweh Shai in his return. That's why he's preparing, he's preparing this place. He's preparing that great shake up. Verse uh, Hebrews 12 and 25. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. So we come out, we speak these words, these oracles of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. It says, speak down to the to his people, to the ears of his people. So see, you refuse these men. You don't refuse these men. Because these men are telling you things that can keep your, your uh, life sustained in that day of trouble. Okay? You know? Because it's going to be a hard to escape when, when that trouble hits, when that time of Jacob's trouble. Because in Hebrews 10 chapter, you read the 31st verse, it says the fearful thing fall into the hands of the what? The living power, man. Right? But you can't box with the Lord, man. The power that, that the power of the universe, man. Who created you? How you gonna how you gonna deal with that? So how you gonna refuse his words when it's read words being read by his men, man? Okay. It says, for if they escape not the, who refuse him to speak on earth, how may they how how shall not we escape? If you turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. So how are you gonna be able to turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? Okay? And you people are, are gonna do it. So that's why the Lord said that slain is gonna be many. The rebukes are gonna be with flames and fire, man. When you wanna purify something, you use fire. Fire is a is an excellent cleaning agent, man. You know? It's a, it's a it's an excellent purifying agent. You know, when you see people burn acres and acres of, 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 of land, they're actually burning that ground for it to what? To cleanse the ground where that, where that grass will grow back uh, more uh, better, man. You know? Verse 26, whose voice did shook the earth, because it did shake the earth in the time when he came, when he came uh, down 
just to mount the uh, 